Welcome to another reaction video. Uh, today we're going to be reacting to a clip from Tucker Carlson. This is my first time as a guest on Tucker Carlson. It's a great honor. <laughs> So maybe you're starting to think this isn't actually about Roe. Maybe it's about something more than that. Maybe it's about something much darker than that. Take a look at what Democrats are doing in Congress right now if you want a sense of what their plans are. This is a... Look at this. Beating a baby on the pavement. I wonder, I wonder if he's trying to be offensive. What, what is he trying to offend? What is he trying to insult? He's trying to insult the image of God in man. Always remember this, if the, if the peasants in the valley hate the king who lives in the castle on the hill, but they can't reach the castle on the hill, they can't overthrow him, they're not strong enough to revolt, so what do they do? Well, they burn the king in effigy down in the valley, down in the town. They, they burn his image, and that's what's happening here. The child bears the image of God, man bears the image of God, women bear the image of God, and so we want to deface that image, insult that image, burn that effigy every chance we get. Dismember the child, sell the pieces, carve up the man, make him into a, a sorry excuse for a eunuch. Um, all, of, all of this is uh, attacks vandalizing the image of God in man because man and woman bearing the image of God reminds people of God. This is a real passage from a new abortion bill the Democrats are trying to get through the Congress, and we're quoting, this act is intended to protect all people with the capacity for pregnancy, cisgender women, transgender men, non-binary individuals, those who identify with a different gender, and others. Those others would include, <laughs> I don't know. If you have an idea of what others might represent, please write us. So there it is. It's not really about codifying Roe, abortions for people who, quote, need them, safe, legal, and rare. It's about something much bigger than that. It's about displacing God as the great decider. Democrats now reserve the right to rewrite biology, which is to say, dominion over nature. Right. This is a contest over who is God. Is God God? or is man to be God? And I'd like to point out in passing that while many of our reformed thought leaders, I think we call them now, many of our reformed uh, types are blathering on about this and that, Tucker Carlson has picked up the mantle of Francis Schaeffer. <laughs> now they're in charge. So again, this isn't just about intimidating Supreme Court justices, five of them, into changing their views on Roe v. Wade. It's about attacking Christianity, because Christianity stands in their way. That is exactly right. Christianity stands between the progressive left and their final goal, which is the abolition of man and ultimate power for them. The Christian right's decades-long push to revoke abortion rights is just part of their broader agenda. Well, what else? What else do they want? What else is it? We want rights for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's our secret agenda. Not only can you not kill the babies, you can't kill anybody else. <laughs> Where will all, what shall the harvest be? <laughs> this, uh, I, I can't stand it. This is not just about abortion. Uh, this is about a much broader uh, set of issues uh, that are have, have, that really are about a kind of white Christian. White. How did white get in there? That's one point. How did white get into this litany? That's the first thing. And the second thing is, I want you to notice the color of this gentleman. <laughs> he's pretty white. In fact, he's the whitest person I've seen all day. Right worldview. It's very important for us to recognize. Oh, I'll take that back. She's pretty white too. <laughs> blonde, black, <laughs> and blonde that it is Christian extremism that is at the root of the shame and the stigma that allows laws like this to pass, that allows justices like this to be uh, confirmed. Discovered that they could manufacture and then channel their moral outrage toward abortion, creating a new litmus test for conservative politicians. References to God and Christian beliefs are often invoked in these political instances. You bet. Because we're doing what we do in the name of God. We do what we do in the name of Jesus Christ. 
you're doing what you do in the name of man, whatever that is. With some saying outright that they believe America is a Christian nation. Well, we say outright that America used to be a Christian nation and is consequently now an apostate nation, a nation that is in uh, grave disobedience and which has a responsibility before God to repent and return to being a Christian nation. How's that? So they're mad not really just at Alito, but at Christianity and Christians, believers, people of faith. They have been for a long time, but it's weird if you think about it. Why are liberals angry at Christianity? You wouldn't think they would be. Christianity has been the single greatest force for human rights in history. <laughs> That's why they don't like it. They, they, they are after the abolition of man. They are after the abolition of humanity. You can't not know what a baby is and not know what a woman is and not know what a man is and simultaneously not know what a human being is. What they're doing, what they're claiming by their pro professions of ignorance, I don't know what a man or a woman or a boy or a girl is. I don't know what a human being is. And that's pretty convenient because they want to take away all rights from all alleged human beings. In fact, the Western understanding of human rights, our understanding of human rights, all of us, atheists included, is based on Christianity. That's where it comes from. Christianity is the reason we don't have slavery and segregation and children working in factories. Christians did that. So if you're a sincere liberal, it would seem odd to hate Christians. But the totalitarians always do hate Christians. The Soviets killed the priests first. So did Mao. During the Spanish Civil War, the communists subjected a statue of Jesus to a symbolic execution in front of a firing squad. It was one of the first things they did within weeks of the war breaking out. Here's the picture on your screen. Shooting Jesus. I've got bad, bad news for the people trying to shoot Jesus. He's out of range. So modern liberals hate Christianity not because it's repressive, but because they are. Any religion that puts God before government is by definition a threat to their power. Right. And I made the joke earlier about Tucker picking up the mantle of Francis Schaeffer, but it was Schaeffer who told us, if there is no God above the state, the state is God. If there is no God above the state that can tell the state to knock it off, then the state has become your God. That's what this is all about. Who shall be God? Most offensive of all, Christianity specifically rejects their most cherished dogma, which is racial hierarchy. Christianity describes a universal brotherhood of man. Every person created in God's image and therefore, for that reason, morally equal. And this is precisely why the left wants to separate humanity from personhood. Humanity is what you might find looking, examining the cells of a, of a creature under a microscope. Uh, yes, this is, this is from a human body. But personhood, they want to be a legal issue, something that they can determine by means of their machinations. So they want, th th that's why you can be biologically one thing and identify as another. They w and, but what happens if society identifies you as a non-person. Yes, you're human, but not a person. Undermining Christianity is the central project of the left, because it stands in their way. As dozens of churches burned across Canada last summer, the country's prime minister, Justin Trudeau, refused to condemn the fire bombings. He called them, quote, understandable. Then the head of Canada's ACLU effectively endorsed the fire bombings. Burn it all down, she wrote. And now we're seeing it happen here as we knew it would. So this, uh, this little kit clip, put it, put it in a nutshell pretty nicely. Uh, what, you, what you have to understand is all of the things that get people fired up and, uh, where they're in conflict with a certain level of religious fervor, the reason that's happening is because at bottom, this really is a religious war. And there are some issues that are directly, obviously religious, like the, like the right to life issue. And there are some that are secondary, like uh, right to keep and bear arms, for example. That's a proxy war. But the, the reason for the conflict is the worldview collision between the progressive left and Orthodox Christianity. Those are the two contenders. Thanks for watching. 
If you'd like more of this kind of content, be sure to check out Canon Plus. That's where you can find all of my audiobooks and a huge collection of resources to help you engage with culture and live faithfully. By subscribing to Canon Plus, you're supporting the making of this show and more. If you haven't joined up yet, you can get your first month for just 99 cents by using the promo code DUG99.